there are some people who have connected on Zoom, some people are on YouTube, on the English or the Spanish channels. For us, it's always a pleasure to have these events within the European Film Meeting. First thing to tell you is a few practical notes so that you can choose the language of your preference for this talk. As I have just said, this dialogue will be in Spanish and English, and you can listen to it in either of these languages. For that, you have to go to Zoom's toolbar, search for the globe icon that is called interpretation. There, clicking on it, you will be able to choose either Spanish or English. That is to say, the language of your preference. You also have the original option if you understand both languages, or you can choose the language of your preference. If you set it to original, you will listen to a mixture of languages, which is not that comfortable. So that's why we recommend you choose either Spanish or English. Well, this is about translation. And now I'm going to let you know how this will work. Anna and Cecilia will first have a dialogue. And after a while, we will open a space for the audience to ask questions. People on YouTube, you can send your questions through the chat live, and we will gather the questions and convey them to Cecilia. And if you're on Zoom, you have the opportunity to turn on your camera and make and talk. For this exchange, if you want to participate, please use the reactions function on Zoom. It's on the toolbar. And when you click on it, you can see the option to raise your hand. If you click on raise hand, Cecilia will see that you are raising your hand and she will then give you the floor so that you can ask your question or make your comment. Until then, please keep your microphones on mute so that there is no noise or interference during the dialogue. Well, having given you all the practical notes, we will now switch to the dialogue. Welcome everyone who has joined us on Zoom or on YouTube. This is the second special activity that we have organized in the fall edition of the European Film Meeting. The European Film Meeting is a meeting that is organized by the European Union delegation in Argentina, from which 16 embassies are taking part embassies and in cultural institutions. They select a film with which they want to represent their country in this edition. Well, in this case, I will name the countries that are part of the European Film Meeting because if it's not thanks to those delegations, there will be no European Film Meeting. In this edition, we have Germany, Austria, Belgium, Croatia, Denmark, Spain, Slovenia, France, Finland, Greece, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Poland, Portugal, and Sweden. So you can see films from all of those countries, and also you can take part of some dialogues for selected films, in this case, the film Communion by Anna Samechka. So after this brief introduction, I will hand the floor to Alicia Tunk, who is the head of cultural affairs of the Polish embassy. And she will tell us why the embassy chose this film to represent their country. And after then, Cecilia will take the floor so that we can start with the dialogue. So we thank Anna, Cecilia, the Polish embassy, the European delegation for helping here, and also the European Film Meetings team that makes everything possible from the logistical side. So thank you very much. And Alicia, you have the floor. 
Hola, buenas tardes. Hello, uh, gracias, good afternoon. Mariana. Thank bueno, you, Mariana. Uh, well, estar, uh, it's a huge pleasure to be here with all of you and to represent, to present the documentary uh, from this writer, uh, director, Zemetska. and writer uh, from Poland, uh, Anna Semetska. Uh, I thank Mariana's huge work Gisela and her team, Gisela González, also from the delegation in Argentina. It makes us very proud to be part of the European Film uh, me gustaría decir, I would like que to say el documental fue that por la the documentary was chosen eh, by the embassy tema de to fit esta with del the topic uh, of Europeo, this European Film Meeting exhibition. Facing reality. Um, so we chose bueno, Anna's documentary because in Polish filmmaking, documentaries are very good and very strong, especially in documentaries, right? Además, eh, Ana Zamezka Ana eh, recibió por ese eh, largometraje por su primer largometraje eh, muchos premios, eh, más de 40 awards, premios. Over 40 eh, awards. También presentó eh, And este she also documental has en eh, más de 100 festivales film festivals at the international eh, level. Para nosotros, so eh, for us, este, este documental lleva documentary, muy... Eh, muy interesante eh, mensaje. Mm, a very crecer interesting es message. un camino eh, lleno de, de, de decepciones. Durante la adolescencia se abandonan los sueños infantiles y las imágenes eh, ingenuas de uno mismo y de los demás de allegados. Pero well. eh, la esperanza But nos acompaña y como decimos en eh, Polonia, eh, muere Poland, eh, la eh, última, como la última. Hope dies last. Eh, además, eh, la protagonista the de esta película es una persona muy interesante. Is a very interesting person. El documental cuenta uh, the documentary historia tells del crecimiento humano y del proceso de abandonar las propias um, ilusiones. También sobre los desafíos de la adolescencia. Uh, lo podemos ver muy bien uh, en su comportamiento. Mm, para terminar, quisiera decir que lo que llama mi atención en el documental es el mundo de las emociones de la protagonista. El sentimiento, de la inocencia, el amor, su doloroso anhelo uh, por su madre. Y el regreso a la niña. También que es interesante es la cercanía con ella. Also, uh, it is como podemos sentir is how como close los we are to her, how we can Bueno, feel muchísimas gracias por la invitación Thank y que so disfruten la charla. Thank you so much for the and please enjoy this meeting. Hola. Hello. Gracias. Thank you very much, Mariana. Gracias. Thank you, Alicia. Alicia. And thank you. Of course, Anna and everyone who is joining us today to share this moment, this dialogue, which will be unique. Furthermore, beyond the thank you notes for being part of this 18th edition of the European Film Meeting, which had a first part in the spring 2021, and we're having the second part in this fall 2022. I wanted you to remember that it's a hybrid edition that has a virtual programming and many virtual activities, but we also have on-site live projections at the federal level in different points of the country, which is really important. This festival reaches many audiences everywhere through many channels. So it's a big meeting. This is a huge encounter that they are proposing to us. I wanted to thank the European Union delegation in Argentina and all of the embassies and cultural institutions that take part of it. I also wanted to thank all of the members of the team, Macarena Herrera Bravo, Ana Schmuckler, Mariana Barceló, of course. And last week, we had a dialogue with Laurent Micheli with his film Lola. And it's great to be meeting today to talk about Communion, Anna, Anna Zemetska's films, which is a film that, as Alicia was saying just now, has obtained many awards, been projected in many festivals. It was premiered at the Critic Week at the Locarno Film Festival. And we are very lucky right now because we're going to have this dialogue, this exchange with Anna Zemetska. 
And before starting, I wanted to thank Alejo Magariños, who is the interpreter for this dialogue. So thank you very much, everyone. You can participate afterwards. First, let's start this dialogue with Anna. Welcome, Anna. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Buenas tardes. I would like to thank, uh, thank the, uh, the European Film Meetings for the invitation, first of all, and uh, Polish Embassy as well. And thank you, Alicia, for your warm words about, about my film. Uh, it's a big pleasure to be here. I think I'm, I might be wrong, but I think this is the first uh, public screening of my film in, in Argent Argentina. So I'm very uh, excited that it finally happened because I, I always wanted to uh, show it to an uh, Argentinian audience. So uh, again, thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you, Anna. Just two words about Anna. Just a while ago, she said that you were a director, but also a writer. And you had many roles in your own film and a very organic and comprehensive involvement in your film. But I also wanted to give you some context. Anna has also studied journalism, anthropology, photography. And this is her first film. So this film that makes us approach this family in a small town in Poland. And besides all of the awards, one of them has been very relevant, the best documentary given by the European Film Academy. So Anna, I wanted to start by asking you things that I had many questions in my mind as I watched the film, but I wanted you to start by telling us about how you approached these characters, this story, how you met them, and why you chose to start shooting this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think that the whole process was uh, not forced and quite organic, <laughs> uh, uh, fulfilled with a lot of like lucky uh, circumstances and uh, I don't know what. Uh, I was back when I met my characters. Uh, back then, I was working on a, a script uh, for a short film uh, on very similar topic. So when I met them, and that was a coincidence, I met the father of the children basically on the train station, and he told me about about his family and about about first of all about Ola. Uh, everything what he said uh, was just you know like just sounded very familiar to what I was like thinking about back then and uh, I just, you know, we had a good conversation and I just asked him if I could meet his children uh, and uh, sometime later it happened. But uh, the decision to make a film about this family uh, didn't appear at the same moment. Uh, I just wanted to, like intuitively, I just wanted to meet them. <laughs> uh, I didn't have intention from the beginning to make a film about them. Uh, but after spending some time with this family, because like, to be honest, from the very, very beginning, you know, everything that I saw in, the, in this family and in this house uh, looked and felt like very uh, tempting, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, so yeah, I was I, I I was I was curious and and I I was investing more and more time and uh, after after a few months I, I realized that I would like to make a film about this family and I dropped this idea for a short fiction film and and this and decided to uh, start uh, to work on this film. Claro, la película un poco because the film. Well, it's very difficult right now, I think, to talk about, and thank you, Anna, for your answer, but to say this about the film and reality, let's say documentary and fiction, uh, how a project can emerge from reality itself, like your connection, your encounter with this father, and then it comes or it becomes a fiction product or work, and then it reconnects with something which is more close to um, cinema verite or film and reality. And as uh, you were saying, the first thing was a meeting with the father, 
And the second thing was a meeting with the family. And I think it's very important and that it's evident in the film and it is visible in the distance that there is between you and them. It's a very, very precise distance, very close, very present there. You are very present there, but at the same time, with a lot of respect and as if you could feel every vibration that occurs in that home. So I wanted to ask you, how did you manage to get that in a shooting? When you have decided, first you didn't want to make a film, but then when you decide to make a film, how was the process of working with them in that space? Uh, so that was the challenge, you know, because I could feel this tension uh, in this house and this vibration, as you, as you called it. Uh, but I was a challenge, and from the very beginning, you know, this question like how to uh, transfer this experience uh, on a on a uh, on a screen, right? Because it's not that easy. Uh, at least it, it wasn't for me. Uh, I definitely didn't want to have this kind of like, you know, voyeuristic camera. And uh, so I was like, rather like, wanted to focus on emotions, not necessarily of the social context. Uh, you know, I didn't want to make a film about like a poor family that needs some kind of like, you know, help. Uh, that wasn't my uh, that wasn't my uh, my focus. I wanted to focus on on this family and show all the spectrum of emotions that I could experience there. And uh, so I was rather like following emotions than than I don't know like events or action. Uh, because and that was something that was really like you know I could see like some hope in the situation very dramatic and complicated family situation that was there for that. So something that was there for sure was love and of course longing and everything. So I was, I wanted to make film about, you know, this, uh, uh, these emotions, but also, you know, that was the, the main, the main uh, lead was the, the skill who is like trying to put this family together. And, uh, and, and that was her like dream to have them like all together in this in this uh, in, in this house and I think that was some kind of like a universal uh, need of like you know every children like everybody like not only children but that's something that we all want right like some security and like some safety and uh, and love uh, so so that was my uh, something that I want to focus and um, to achieve that you know I had to obviously I, I I, I thought that I have to, uh, first of all, be very transparent uh, with my intentions. And so uh, we talked a lot uh, with, uh, with, especially uh, with Ola, uh, about uh, why we want to make this film and what is it about. Uh, I wanted to be sure that she's in it, you know, that she's not, she doesn't, she's not like forced like to be in it because I knew that it won't work. Uh, if she will. So I really wanted her also like to have this kind of like, you know, to be uh, uh, to be sure that we are like doing this together, right? And we wanted, want to make this film together. So I had to spend some time, this is what I'm trying to say, that I had to spend some time with them and with myself as well before I, you know, I made this decision that, that, uh, that I want to start to work on this film. Yes, thank you, Anna, for your answer. And truly, when we start getting to know Ola's character, she is impressive. She is extraordinary, without a doubt. She is an extraordinary girl, uh, above all. And you feel how she carries the weight of the whole family on her shoulders, right? On her body. She embodies that and that love that you talked about despite all of the difficulties, and she still sees a possible future, she doesn't give up. So I was wondering also in connection to all this, if when you worked with her, as you said, you worked together so that she felt that she wasn't alone, I wondered if at times you were proposing situations that she had to solve or that she, if she suggested situations or if all this was part of the game uh, in which 
the film took place and everything was happening in the house, especially about this back and forth with her. But do you mean, uh, like, I'm not sure if I understood the question, like if we, if I proposed, like, you know, like uh, if I like wanted her like to perform or that was the question or? No, como alguna situación. No, more about situations. Perhaps you suggested a situation or a dialogue or triggers or topics at a certain point or actions. And if in her turn, she suggested, or I don't know, I would like to show you this, or I would like to do this, if that exchange was also taking place during the shooting. Absolutely. Like I could, as you could see, Ola is a very uh, assertive and, you know, uh, independent character. And, uh, and uh, yeah, she's like that in the film, and she's like even more like that in life. So everything that happened uh, on the set was, you know, um, some kind of like, uh, you know, uh, came out from some kind of nego negotiation between us, always. And uh, as an example, you know, a scene with the with the uh, with the banana when they are trying, you know, with the you know this uh, holy communion. Uh, I proposed uh, for the film for the scene. I proposed uh, that Nikodem could like you know rehearsal with uh, with uh, with some uh, veg veggie like you know carrot or something because I knew that he's not a big fan of carrots so I thought that it's like you know some kind of like a chance for some potential conflict between them uh, just to make it seem like you know a bit hotter but uh, but uh, but of course like there was like no cooperation from his side because he hated carrots too much, I guess. And then she proposed, knowing him, uh, that he loves bananas. He proposed, she proposed banana, for instance. And uh, it came out even better for the scene because I got something that, I think that these emotions in the end uh, fit better than the emotions I wanted to, you know, achieve uh, for that scene. So uh, in this, like, you know, it's a small example, but uh, but of course, sometimes she wouldn't like, you know, like to to to, to cooperate at all, and uh, she was just tired or she had some other, you know, like plans. Uh, so sometimes it was challenging, but uh, thanks to that, also I learned a lot when it comes to uh, working uh, with, uh, you know, natural actors and and especially children. On a set, I I don't have children myself, so it was also a challenge for me because it's you know sometimes you know and when you know how to you know like achieve something as a parent maybe it's easier like than you know to kind of like to to, um, to negotiate some things uh, with children on a set as well. But not having this experience uh, sometimes, I must say that uh, that uh, yeah that was you know a power battle between us very often. There is a character, well, Nico's character is also wonderful. And there is a moment where he says something, I think, like, as if reality could be turned into fiction or it became fiction also, right? There's a phrase like that. And I think that it makes a lot of sense within the film. And because of what you're telling us, this back and forth that you have, this plot that there is uh, between the reality itself, what can be leaking in from fiction, or what is suggested in this construction. I was wondering if the family also was uneasy because of that, if uh, the four characters were uneasy and how they altered a bit their dynamics when the camera was present and turned on, if that also happened. I mean, of course, like even if I spent with this family, you know, like the years with the camera and they had this years to get used to it, I think that uh, that it, it's always the camera, the presence of the camera always changes dynamics. And, uh, you know, like even, you know, when we are talking, like I'm very much aware that I'm being filmed and you probably as well, right? So I probably, I would sit, I would even have like a more like a, now I'm kind of like trying to sit straight, right? Because I'm in a camera, but normally, I am very tall, so I would rather like sit like that, you know, and just, you know, I wouldn't care. So like, even like a small things like that, but, uh, but also of course, like uh, more important, uh, you know, what they would say and what they wouldn't, how they would, you know, like react uh, and, and, and they wouldn't. So I think that uh, um, 
the presence of the camera, particularly on this in, in this family, um, uh, I I found it like I think that uh, played kind of like important role, because from what I noticed from the very beginning that, uh, you know, that this family, Nico them with his uh, disability and Ola with, with, you know, all this burden that she had was kind of, um, I think, uh, in some way abandoned by the system, you know, uh, and this is also something I was trying to show in the film. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm never showing, you know, the uh, representative of institutions like uh, uh, social care or like teachers or, uh, priests, they are never in the frame because I didn't want to blame like particular people for uh, for not doing the job. I, I wanted rather to, to show that the system doesn't work uh, and that this family is like very much alone and very much, uh, I don't know, like their problems are not being seen by those who should see it and who should do something for them. Uh, so I think that the presence of the camera and, uh, and us as a film crew was in some way important because you know finally somebody saw it and uh, basically like disagreed with what is happening and uh, and also like you know the of course what happened later uh, after the film was premiered uh, uh, there was like articles that the family also could obviously read and interviews and everything and i think that was for the first time when uh, when uh, uh, somebody you know like admitted that something is wrong and uh, that especially for Ola, you know, what she does is absolutely too much, right? And that she shouldn't be in this position, shouldn't be in this situation. So I think that that was <clears throat> this important role that we played as well. I'm not speaking about the film anymore, but now about their life and especially about, you know, Ola. Um, yeah. And Anna you talk about their reaction, right? And the repercussions that you saw, uh, how everything changed when the film came to light. How was the reaction in Poland or in the rest of the world about the, the premiere of the film? Because I think it's not something that happens only in Poland, right? It's something that you can find in many places, sadly, this uh, lack of uh, support by the system for families. How was the reaction? If you could please tell us a bit about that. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, like uh, nothing changed, unfortunately. And I, I mean, I don't, I didn't have this, you know, ambition to change uh, reality. In fact, I don't really believe that art has this power of like changing reality. But uh, uh, if it opens like some kind of discussion, I think it's already uh, a lot. Uh, if this open discussion, um, I'm not sure, like I had some kind of like, you know, like one-to-one uh, uh, -one with meeting, meetings uh, after the screenings, for instance, with, uh, with a social worker that uh, just came for the screening and, uh, and after, after the screening, she, she came to me and she said that, that she will absolutely change her methods, uh, uh, working methods, uh, uh, and, and she, you know, she will completely reorganize her uh, her uh, professional life and from now on she will like you know have like different attitude to to to, to her uh, to her duties so that's something that you know that that happened like you know once or twice uh, um, this didn't open like you know any kind of like a big discussion and i think that's you know like to change the system it's uh, it probably requires much more than only one film uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, the discussion, like, you know, in, this, in some uh, 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 circles, uh, I think it was there, but uh, but if I don't think that changed, like, a lot, unfortunately. Yes, but I think that it's interesting and also important that films such as yours, Communion, help us at least put these topics on the discussion table at least and that they're not left there invisible and i think that there is something or some of the other things that are very valuable from the film which is a film that has many valuable things for sure but there is this feeling there is this feeling that there is no normality possible everything is so difficult that at the same time the film proposes moments of a lot of light a lot of hope moments where a different kind of air flows, right? 
the party, for instance, where they're dancing with all the kids dancing, or even the time of the communion that uh, gives the film its title. And well, I wanted to ask you with regards to these moments, if you try to search and find them during the shooting and how was that process, or if afterwards you created them once that you were editing or working on the plot itself to present it in the film. So to be completely honest with you, the the plot was, uh, of, uh, I mean, the, the script was kind of uh, written before uh, or so we shot the film. Uh, we didn't work on the construction in editing room. Uh, in editing room, it was more, I mean, the, 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 the first cut we got like after like three, three days already. And then it was for like a very long process. Uh, with the amazing editor Agnieszka Grinska uh, to you know to uh, to build this uh, atmosphere and to work of course on this uh, rhythm and space and everything that that uh, that that is in this film and and especially this tension because this tension was like you know not that easy to achieve uh, so uh, so this this happened in editing room but everything else like you know in terms of like um, uh, you know, uh, uh, the construction uh, itself, uh, uh, this was, uh, uh, I, 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 I worked on a script. Of course, it wasn't an iron script because it's a documentary film. And some of the scenes uh, we had to, uh, I had to like rewrite and uh, some things I had to give up because it wasn't possible that time with these people. And, uh, and of course we had to, you know, like change the, change the plan. Uh, but communion itself uh, was, um, uh, yeah, in some way was like a, my idea for the for the plot, <laughs> uh, because uh, Nikodem, uh, when he was uh, eight, and that's the age where children in Poland uh, have this first Holy Communion, which is you know very important event. Uh, it's like a rite of passage, you know. It's like has this kind of also like for the film. Uh, to me, it had the symbolic value. Um, so uh, the, usually, it's like when you are yeah at eight, you have this first holy communion. When the, when Nicodem was eight, the priest said that he is not ready. Uh, I guess in a spiritual sense, and he rejected him. And so Nicodem didn't have this first holy communion. And for for the family, it wasn't a big problem. But you know, uh, when you would ask them they wouldn't be happy that he doesn't have it because it's something that everybody have it and you know it's uh, they didn't want Nikodem to stand out obviously uh, and when i was working on the script i just realized that you know that this uh, first communion which has yeah as for um, a coming of age uh, uh, film uh, this kind of like a symbolic uh, yeah, meaning, uh, but it's also in Poland uh, a, a, a pretext to meet the family. So I knew that Ola will use it as a, a, as a kind of like a pretext to bring the whole, whole family, you know, together. And uh, that was the main topic of the film. Uh, and since the, this is also like the, uh, the title communion, it's not only the communion as a uh, event, as a, a ceremony, but also uh, from Latin, as you know, like a people together, like commune uh, and so on. So that has this kind of like a double, double meaning. And, and Ola, in fact, she used it, of course, she invited the mother and everything. So, uh, so when I proposed this, you know, that, hey, let's try again, let's, you know, let's, let's maybe like, what do you think about it? And then they were like, you know, very positive about this idea. And then we decided, but everything else, you know, this exam when she's like, trying with him and uh, and then ex uh, exam itself and then the whole ceremony of course it wasn't uh, uh, fake <laughs> it wasn't staged uh, it was all uh, real okay. right well thank you so much anna for telling us all this i have two brief comments Nancy Patricia Salazar is thanking everyone for the invitation. This is part of the messages that the people on Zoom are sending. Jose sends greetings from Mar del Plata, and she also he also thanks for this uh, meeting. And let me remind you, if anyone has a question for Anna and 
seeing how generous she is telling us about the film and her work, please either write it on the chat or if you want, you can start using the raise hand function. You can make a comment, uh, ask a question, give your opinion. This is a very unique opportunity. So I now have Mercedes Cutuli asking if the film has been shown in the film festival in Sweden. Yes, one is Goof and the other one is Nordisk Panorama. I don't know, Anna, if among these festivals you had Goof or in Sweden or Nordisk Panorama. Uh, I think in Sweden it was uh, uh, shown at Gothenburg Film Festival. I'm not sure. I wasn't there with the film, so that's why I'm not sure. But I think that was uh, being shown in Gothenburg. Yeah. But I will have to double check. Mira, Ana. Bueno, gracias. Oh, thank you, Anna. And there are some questions. There's also a question here that I had myself. Emek is asking how, in such a tiny space, and they wanted to know if the story with the mother is fiction or not. And Jose is also asking about the mother. She, he says that she's the one that feels less comfortable in front of the camera, as if she didn't belong to the family group. Mm. Yeah, I, 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 she very much belonged to the family. And uh, I think her uh, lack, of com lack of comfort was probably for a uh, cause, as I'm, you know, I can imagine by the situation that we're all in. And also, I spent with her not the, as much time uh, as with uh, with other family members. So obviously, you know, she wasn't. Uh, I met her at the very beginning of the of the process. You know, I, I visited her uh, before I even started to shoot. So she knew that I am filming, and I met her a few times without a camera. And uh, we had a very uh, good, uh, good connection. I think that you know she's. I, I, I personally I very like this person. Like she's really sweet. Uh, and uh, by the way, now she is uh, taking care of, of of her children. As uh, uh, that's like yeah. So all the children are, are with her now. Uh, so I think like answering your question. I, I am assuming that she's she wasn't as used to the camera as, as the rest of the family. Uh, pity that you could feel it. <laughs> I wish she would like you. Uh, I, I wish she was like more uh, uh, natural, but also like maybe maybe that wasn't so bad for the last scene because you know we can see that we can read it as also as a lack of comfort, you know, in the situation and in the family. So uh, yeah, that's one of the reasons as well why why she uh, why she left. I guess. Claro. Gracias por comentarnos esto. Thank you for this comment. Emek is asking, well, it's a comment saying, please tell Anna that he was very shocked by the film. It's a very difficult to forget film. Evidently a film for everyone who has watched it it stays with us in a very deep way. And I can see here something else that I think stands out, which is this society, which is portraying some characters that belong to a family, but also belong to a society that has been very marked by Catholicism. And there is a very strong imprint of Catholicism so why did you decide to face this family from that point of view, underlining the religious part? I think that the religious uh, religion and you know the the uh, yeah wasn't as important for this family as it may look on the screen. I think this uh, first soul communion uh, mm. is something that you know even like I am not Catholic, but even I had it because my parents thought that or everybody had it. So, you know, she also should have it. So, uh, 
it's changing now, of course, uh, but uh, but it's something, you know, like to me, it wasn't about Catholicism or anything else, you know, you have different like a forms of First Holy Communion in different religions, uh, traditions, like we have Paramitsa, for instance, right, it's equivalent. So it was more like a, this, you know, as, as I said before, uh, to me, it was like, you know, more like a symbolic, like rites of passage, you know, like the, you know, that's... Uh, they are. They were somewhere, and now they are somewhere else. So I used it as, uh, as uh, yeah, as some kind of like yeah, uh, a symbolic element in this film. Uh, but it's very much true that, of course, uh, 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 church is very still very strong in Poland and has a lot of, uh, you know. Uh, uh, power and money and influence also on uh, Polish politicians and uh, yeah it's it's not a secret and uh, and so it's, it's it's a very still very very strong institution and very present uh, there is still like a, something like a religion lessons uh, at school it's not obligatory but Nikodem was also attending these lessons and the classes and you could also uh, see it in the film although he of course he was like you know very uh, <laughs> Creative. One of the actually uh, uh, coming back to the question about the uh, you know why uh, first Holy Communion. Uh, one of the uh, situations that inspired me to use uh, this as a kind of like a plot uh, storyline uh, was uh, uh, his uh, one of uh, I went with him um, to one of his religious uh, classes, and uh, I witnessed the situation when the priest asked them to uh, rewrite from the blackboard ten commandments. And uh, he refused to do it, and instead he wrote his own Ten Commandments. Uh, you know, he's uh, like a very poetic, very personal. And you know, like to me, when I saw it, I was like, I mean, like I, I just love this boy so much, and <laughs> and uh, I always, I, I never, you know, like to me, he was never uh, uh, like a disabled. I never treated him as a disabled person. I never saw in him disabled person. To me, he was. Uh, I don't know, like one of the most uh, inspiring humans I've ever had a chance to meet in my life. And uh, and uh, I wanted also like to show him like this in this film, you know, I didn't want to show disabled boy, you know, poor disabled boy. I wanted to show him as a kind of like, uh, like, a yeah, using this religious terminology, uh, a, a prophet <laughs> who knows a bit, more, uh, a bit more than us, who feels a bit more uh and uh yeah and it's just you know very uh creative like a, like you know to me he's an artist like he's uh yeah <laughs> poet <laughs> Anna, creo que, eh, Anna, i think that what you're telling is wonderful about nicodem and the film really conveys that there's something great also that when we are watching the film and you see him such as nobody is paying attention to his involuntary movements, he, the focus is not placed on that. It also makes us rethink about the parameters of what we think normal or different or distinct or special. All the time, the film works on us as viewers on those aspects. And that a poetic aspect that you just mentioned that he's a poet is really clear evident and we think that a lot within the plot and within the world that you are showing us he is an amazing character and also there I don't know up to what point he is aware of these poetics that he is carrying you know, going through life, illuminating everything a bit. Yeah, I mean, also this line that you mentioned, reality becomes fiction. You know, he, of course, it wasn't written. He, he just, he just said it, and out of nowhere, it just appeared. You know, it's like you know, it's, you have. I mean, like, and it just kind of like you know shows that uh, the question is, you know, if he just said it or he wanted to like, you know, like make this comment also uh, as his input to this film. I don't know that, but I know one thing for sure that he's very, uh, uh, he's very conscious and a very intelligent person. And sometimes he's, uh, you know, he's, um, 
uh, his thoughts uh, are much deeper than, than, than we think might be and we might expect from uh, you know boy uh, of his age uh, yeah but he was like you know in this in his school you can also see that you know nobody nobody noticed you know he's completely yeah dismissed unfortunately but uh, yeah see sí, see sí, so aparece así ahí yes that is shown mauricio in the comments that we have in the chat Mauricio says, congratulations, Anna, for this powerful and intimate documentary. My name is Mauricio Hulk. I have Polish roots and I undertook different photographic projects and a short film in conjunction with the Polish embassy in Argentina. I was very touched by your documentary and the way in which you narrated your story in such an intimate and careful way, such a unique look emphasizing the desire to the family to meet in the context of the communion, something so traditional and marked by Catholic religion, really important for the Polish society. So mine is not a question, but congratulations, because creating such an artistic, intimate and real documentary without analyzing the habits and daily lives that are so important for people in the Polish society, they represent hope beyond if we think these habits or costumes are good or bad. This is a very thoughtful documentary. And Jose is saying the young heroine, Ola, is a very good actress. Has she continued filming? Thank you for, for, for your warm words. <laughs> uh, if Ola, she's not, uh, she's, I, I don't think she's into acting. I think this, this film was in, I mean, like it was, it was too much for her anyway. <laughs> uh, I don't think that she has this kind of uh, plans even, uh, but you know, you never know. I think personally that she's very talented and uh, um, I don't, I mean, like I treat, uh, actors and i call them actors in a documentary film as actors and i'm trying you know like to work with them and uh, uh with the different methods but as like you know with actors and i think that uh it's not that easy i mean it's it's you can say that we just have to be yourself and don't think about the camera it's not that simple i would say that it's also like requires a lot of talent uh and also work from um from documentary uh, actors uh and uh, very much i mean very often their efforts are not appreciated in the same way as you know professional actors so uh i hope this will, will be changed <laughs> once and we also we're gonna have you know at film festivals awards for uh, actors uh, for, um, who are like you know uh, characters of documentary films yes in fact and i think that at a certain point several films that work around this with non-professional actors but acting also produces changes in the visions that we have for us that work on the organization of film festivals there are in fact festivals in which in there are changes in uh, the Mar del Plata Film Festival where I work. The award was uh, awarded to someone like Ola Nico. We changed the name from best actor to best performer precisely to be more inclusive within this type of look on the awards, as you were saying. Mercedes Cotulli is thanking you for the answers and for your good disposal. And thank you for working one of the most important arts that makes all of us cinephiles happy. And Emek is saying that when he saw the religious scenes, he saw a great contradiction of church regarding poor people. They demand from poor people, but they are not helping them according to their own doctrine, this tension that you can see there. He also says that Nicodem is adorable and Ola is tremendously strong. Comments that people are writing on YouTube and Federico Pablo is saying, thank you for the festival. You have really helped us during the pandemic and you're still inviting us to watch the best films at home. And that's right. As Anna said in the beginning, this is a film that had not been shown in Argentina so far. So this 
kind of your film meetings help us have this film reach their audiences. These are important and unforgettable films. Jose is saying that this documentary will stay in the hearts of everyone who has watched it, which is unforgettable. And I want to say that this is a film that becomes unforgettable. And I was wondering, Anna, to start wrapping up this dialogue, if at the time of making the film, because this is your first film, if you had in mind, I don't know, what inspired you? Other films, books, maybe? You talked about Nico as a poet, so I don't know, which were your sources of inspiration beyond the, your encounter with them? Um, I had many inspirations. I was watching a lot. I don't have also like, you know, regular film school. So I don't have this, you know, like a regular, like a film training. Um, so I had to, I have to, I had to, you know, like do my homework, obviously. Um, I mean, every, anything can be inspi ins inspiring to movie. It doesn't have to necessarily, you know, be other like films. However, uh, I watched a lot of uh, coming of age movies when I was uh, prepping for this for this film. One of my uh, favorites ever uh, is uh, uh, Nobody Knows by uh, Korida. Uh, uh, also Japanese, uh, another Japanese uh, uh, director, uh, Nagisa Oshima and his film uh, Boy Shonen from the 60s. Uh, um, uh, actually, one of the inspirations was also uh, uh, Dreyer's uh, Ordet, the word. Uh, this main character, you know, this man who is like, you know, Christ, that was, you know, like very much to me was, you know, I, 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 when I watch this film, I think about Nicolem. Um, so, yeah, obviously, you know, like a classics, like, like Cast by Ken Loach and, uh, and many others. Uh, yeah, I, I just basically, I was... Uh, uh, yeah, I, I was trying to watch like anything that's like, you know, was, was made before <laughs> about like a coming of age movies, which I actually, I, I like this genre as well, coming of age. Uh, I still, I think I still feel like a kid, so. <laughs> Well, Anna, thank you also for telling us about these films, because now we will going to go and search those films that you mentioned, those directors that maybe we have not watched, and also to share, because something that is beautiful when we have these dialogues, I think, is how everything turns into a multiplying effect. So what what inspired you reaches us and opens other doors for us. So thank you for being so generous in this dialogue, for everything you shared with us. And we hope that this first film gives birth to many more films by you, that you bring your films to this part of the world and the other parts of the world through film. I want to invite Everyone who is connected, if you want to turn on your cameras to greet Anna, please do so. And we are going to start wrapping up. There's someone asking if we can watch this dialogue again. I think it is possible. Mariana will tell us shortly. But mainly, Anna, we wanted to thank you once more for this dialogue for your generosity, and I wanted to thank all of the team and everyone who has joined us for this activity. Yes, well, thank you so much, Ceci, a pleasure. Ceci is an honored guest at the European Film Meeting. She's always helping us with this type of dialogues. It's a pleasure. She's also very warm, so thank you, Ceci, eternally thank you. And also, thank you, thank you, thank you, Anna. It was a very rich dialogue and it was truly a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you, Alicia, for Poland's important contribution and thank you to the delegation, thanks to the team and thanks everyone who has joined to listen. Thank you for your participation. Without you, this encounter, this meeting wouldn't be what it is. And as Ceci said, you can listen to these dialogues. They will be on our website, cineue 
argentina.com. They will write it in the chat so that you can find it. And in the tab special events, you have these dialogues recordings. We have more films. We have the last weekend of online films and we will have uh, screenings in Tigre. So whoever is close to Tigre 28th and 29th, we will have screenings. And until the 31st, you can watch films online. You can still watch communion if you're online now and you haven't watched it, you can still watch it. So I think this is everything. Thank you, everyone. And a round of applause for Anna and Ceci and an applause for everyone, for, for everyone who has participated. Thank you so much again for having me. And Cecilia, thank you so much for uh, having this conversation with me. And uh, it was a true big pleasure. And uh, it was also nice to revisit because it's been a while since this premiere and uh, you know this festival uh, circuit and everything. So it was kind of like, uh, yeah, surreal to revisit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, big pleasure to uh, talk to you. And uh, again, like, thank you for, for, for having me.